Thank you, BB. <laughs> Lighter. And, ah, kind of kind of sang my message out a little bit this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for that. And thank you, Larry, for that opportunity to do a body scan. And I got the I got a smile on that knot that was in the pit of my tongue. We just kind of want to stay there all the time. So I'm learning, I'm learning how to put a smile on it to make it ease up. So thank you for that, Larry. Well, at the risk of the feedback into your place when my speaking, um, per your request, <laughs> per your Thank request, you. we do take requests here at the meditation. <laughs> All right, remember yeah. that. Remember, if there's any anything that any seriously any, any you know, kind of meditation, any form of meditation that you would like to you know experience and have us share with you on Sunday during the celebration, you know, drop Larry a a, a, a message. Um, and he's also a hypnotherapist. Oh, you know what? If, if I may, I, mean, I looked at my blank <laughs> page. There, so there was something like I wanted to. Um, the, so mindfulness meditation goes, we just did the part of the body, right? And it goes mind, um, emotions, and thoughts. And really what to know is when you do these things is you are not your mind. You are not your emotions. We are. We are not our mind. We are not our emotions. We are not our body. Right. We are that which is observing it. Right. We are the consciousness, right? Conscious yeah. creators. Conscious creators. Conscious aware and awakened. Yes. We, okay. So, well, thank you, Larry. For Thanks that. for indulging me on it. Oh no. We love it. We love to be. We we love to indulge. Part of celebrating. <laughs> Wish we had some cake to give you. Anyway, good morning. Good morning again. Team Conscious Creators are wide awake and aware, understanding and knowing who you are, whose you are, and what you are. I'm I'm I am just honored to be a part of the team. I truly, truly am. And again, welcome this morning to our Sunday morning spiritual celebration. We're here every Sunday morning at, at 11 for about an hour. And we try not to go too much over that hour. So I'm going to jump right in here, but I do want to invite you when, if, if, if by chance we, you know, drop um, a text to you and, and I, you know, give you the, the, the link for our Zoom, pass it on, pass it on. And remember that we have a YouTube channel and usually after our messages on Sunday, um, sometime Monday or Tuesday, you can find those on a YouTube channel. So um, remember, look us up on YouTube. I'm going to try to drop everybody uh, give everybody that channel next week. We're going to probably have it so we can put it in the chat so you can know know how to subscribe when you and when you go there, subscribe, leave a message, leave a leave a comment when you're when you're listening or or sharing some of our content there with us on our YouTube channel as well. So thanks again for being with me this morning, and um, I'm I'm just excited. Like I said, I'm excited and grateful to be a part of the celebration. We're celebrating hearing the voice of God. God speaks all the time. God is always speaking. God never stops speaking. <laughs> but we are celebrating the fact that we, our spirit man, prompt us to listen for, have ourselves tuned in to hear the voice of God. And I'm sure that all of us, each one of us, has have a developed. So I'm ho hopefully I'm preaching to the choir, <laughs> preaching to the choir this morning. So what I'm sharing with you uh, maybe hopefully it'll confirm something that you already knew or you already know or or put an emphasis on something that, oh yeah, I didn't think about, I haven't thought about that. Well, anyway, share it forward, share it forward. Whatever you receive, I promise you, if you receive it, even if it's uh, something like, you that, yeah, you want to shake your head too, I guarantee you that someone else has a big question mark about it somewhere in, in and about them. So share, 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 share your celebration. Don't let it stop today. Share it, pass it on. Pass it on. God knows me. God speaks to me. I hear you, Father, and I follow you. I am so thankful, so thankful that I have a spirit in me that is tuned in to hear you. And that is that and that I, as a physical human being, desire, hunger, thirst to hear and share in the, the benefits of that voice, Father. Thank you for placing a part of you in me that yearns to be a part of you at all times. Amen. You know, as I was preparing myself for this morning's message, 
no research, love to research. And I was going on finding some different quotes about the voice of God and hearing from God and, you know, how to listen, things like that. I ran across a Rumi quote that really spoke to me. And he said, in any given moment, there are a hundred messages from God. I said, wow, that's right. And no matter which way you look, there's a message. So you know what? I, I kind of wanted to put an exclamation on that. And I said, you know, not just a hundred, Rumi. There's hundreds of messages, hundreds of them, not just a hundred, hundreds of messages from God, from Father, from Creator, from Source at any given moment of our day or of our lives or any time. So that's what my mind did. My mind agreed with him, but put an exclamation point on it. God is always speaking to us in some way or another. The question is, are we listening? And if we're listening, do we hear? And if we hear, how do we know it's God that we're hearing and listening to? Hmm. Yeah. Got a lot of noise going on in our world and in our lives. So we hear we got something, we're hearing something all the time. I'm hearing a click, click, click in my background here. And I'm gonna take real quick and unplug it because it's bothering me. So we're always listening. We're always hearing something. Something's always, you know, going on that we can tune ourselves into. But is it God's voice that we hear? And what's the, what's what's the big deal? I mean, you know, I hear my I hear the baby crying sometimes. I hear the, you know, the the, the, the plane's going over, I hear things happening all the time. You know, is it just for me just to be aware, just to give me a signal that I'm alive and when? What is that? What is it so important about the voice of, of God, of hearing? Well, I don't, I'm not going to go into that because you probably already know that, the reason, the importance of being able to decipher God's voice, the things that you hear from God, from everybody else. I'm sure you already know that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, label you with trying to explain the benefits of hearing God's voice, because I'm sure you do. Anyway, I'm convinced that God speaks to each one of us individually and as a collective as well, speak to us collectively as a human race, but also speaks to us right down to the little person that Jane is in the millions and billions of people, trillions of people in this on this earth. And God speaks to each one of those persons individually, as well as us as a, a, a human race, as a nation. We, you know, we have a message in this nation that we all share as a collective member of the United States of America. And we also have a message that we hear that God speaks to us as a nation, as a country, as a as a community, as a family, as a parent, as a as a gene, as a Larry, as a to Aerie, as a rope, as, as a my phone, as SMC, I see, talks to each one of us individually. So how, again, do you know that it is God's, indeed God's voice that you hear? Do you know what it is? What, what does God's voice sound like to you? How, how do you know? How do you know? Can you hear it and, and know for sure that it is indeed, indeed God or just, to, you know, just your own mind talking to you or ego? I don't want to talk too loud. I might wake ego up. You go to sleep right now. But ego is an opinion you hear. You know, you're getting an opinion from a newsreel that you heard on the on the news or or some something that's, you know, ruminating in your in your thoughts, in your mind. How do you know? It's God. I'm going to leave that thought with you. And I want you to ponder and meditate on that. Just chew on it. Because you want to know. You want to know that it's God. Because if I'm going to follow God, I want to know that that's who I'm following when I hear it and I start following. God knows me. God speaks to me. I hear God and I follow God. Remember when you were a child, when you were a little person, little child, and your parents admonished you, you know, said, warned you and admonished you, really warned you and admonished you, really punished you otherwise, if you didn't obey this one, that you were not to speak to strangers. Remember that? Remember that? Don't talk to strangers. Don't talk to strangers. 
Hmm. And she didn't have to go on to tell me that, you know, don't talk to them. Don't, don't listen to them. Don't talk, don't talk to them. Don't listen to what they have to say, you know? So if a stranger approached me, that warning from my mom popped in my head and I either turned away or ran away or, or shut my, you know, shut off the sound or, you know, I just ignored it or separated myself from it. If it was a stranger that was trying to get my attention. So we know, we know that we are, we know what a stranger is. I guess I don't have to tell you, I'm, I'm sure that your parents educated you on what a stranger was. Because you needed to be able to identify a stranger so you wouldn't talk to them, so you would turn away, so you would run away, so you would leave immediately and not pay attention, separate yourself from them. So I'm sure that you know what a stranger is. So when we profess to hearing, so when we know, when we know what a stranger is, and we profess to listening to God, then we know when I profess to listen to God, I know that God is no stranger to me. When I listen to God, when I hear God's voice, when God approaches me, when God identifies God's self to me, it's not a stranger. So I can listen, I can stick around. I don't have to run. I don't have to see this warning, warning, warning come up in my mind and my heart. You know, even today, you know, I'm, a, I'm an old lady. I'm a grandmama, great grandmama. In fact, I can, st I still tell my kids and their kids and their, do not talk to strangers. Be cautious of strangers. Don't take anything from them. Don't talk to them. Don't listen to them. You get, you get away from them as soon as you possibly can. Don't let them tell you anything. Right? So we know what a stranger is. We know that. So again, think about it. Think about how you know, how you know that God isn't a stranger. What makes God not a stranger to you? Hmm. So that you can hear the voice, recognize the voice, and pay attention to the voice. Because I think it was Jesus that reminded his, 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 his followers, you know, his friends, his disciples, those folk that were trailing behind him. He reminded them that, I'm, you know, I'm the shepherd and the shepherd knows the sheep and the sheep knows the shepherd and the shepherd hears the sheep, the sheep hear the shepherd talking and the shepherd's sheep will follow the sheep, will follow the shepherd because the sheep knows the shepherd, the sheep trusts the, the shepherd's not a stranger. God's not a stranger. God is not a stranger. Make sure that God is not a stranger to you. And not just not a stranger, but identify what God is to you. Is that a stranger? What is he? What is God to you? Is that a stranger? Take him out of that. Take him out of that category. I'm going to tell you right now, if you know anybody that says God is a stranger to them, introduce them to God. Introduce them to God. Put a big smile on your face and openly, willingly, without a doubt, Tell them who God is. And better yet, show them who God is. Because God is not a stranger to any of us. Whether we, well, let me put it this way. You are not a stranger to God. None of us are a stranger to God. Well, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Because unless, I mean, there's some folk out in this world that walk around that is, that, that, you know, God is a stranger to them. They don't quite get the God thing. They don't understand why this is happening in my life. If there's a God thing, what is it? Who is this God? What is he? You know, so, so God can, God can be a stranger to people, but understand that you're not a stranger to God. So I admonish you, admonish you about your understanding and your knowledge of God. I just warn you, do not let anybody approach you that say they admit to you that they don't know that, you know, God is a stranger to me. I don't know what God, remember, just tell them, tell them, tell them know what he, God, let them know who God is to you and remind them that, you know, may not know God, but God knows you. Even if you can just leave them with that, you might not know God, but God knows you. All right. So always know that God knows you and you're not a stranger. Don't be ashamed to say it. Don't be ashamed to share it. Don't be ashamed to let other folk know. And like I said, our 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 
our um, affirmation and our theme for the week is God knows me, God speaks to me, I hear God, and I oh, I follow God. This is an, ass an, an assurance. These words, that, that is an assurance to you. Again, that was spoken by my one of my mentors and my, you know, he, 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 I'm, that's my savior. He's, his life saved my life. Because looking and understanding Jesus' life, it saved my life. Because I recognize that, hey, he was, God, he called God, he called God Father. You know, I grew up, I didn't know my father very well. My parents were divorced and separated when I was very young. And so I didn't spend that time with an earthly father. So I had to learn what a father was. So that's one of the reasons that I call Father God Father is because I mimic Jesus. I know, I know how Jesus felt about God being his father. And I thought, hey, that's pretty good. I want, I want a dad. God's going to be my daddy. Yes. So I start walking and trying to mimic and understand that because I really missed, I personally felt like as a human little girl that I missed having that, that person in my life, that physical person in my life. But you know what? I've learned that God is that person that was missing and so much more. He's a father to me. He's a daddy to me. He's a doctor. He's so much more than my, than my physical father could ever have been. Still miss him. Still too bad and too sad in his case that we didn't have that relationship. But it, I want to I want to say today, and I thank God, like, and I thank Jesus for being that example for showing me that God, that Jesus, that God could be a father, and what that meant. So be assured when God says that I know you. Believe that, and whatever it is in your life that you need something other than a stranger to be, allow God to be that. You know, some people call God friend, David, where David was, in fact, God called David friend. God was, God was no longer a stranger to, he knew David, he knew David as David and he knew David as friend. And David, the word, the Bible tells us that David was a man after God's heart. So whatever it is that you are lacking in this human flesh, if you get to know God and familiarize yourself with God, God can be all of that and then some. Hearing the voice of, of, of someone that is not a stranger to you, a friend to you, a father to you, a, a doctor to you, you know what to listen for. You know what you're listening for when you're listening for a father, you're listening for a friend, a mom, or or, or a doctor, whatever it is, whatever it is that you um want to want to understand God to be and God can be all of that and then some believe me whatever it is that you want God to be you get to know God in that perspective or that concept or that idea or that whatever that need that you have and once you get familiar with God in that way then that gives you more familiarity to the conversation. How I mean, how do we make how do we have relationships and how do we how do we come to know someone? We get to know their names, we get to know a little bit about them, we get to know, you know, let our guard down, share a little bit about us. But communication, communication is, you know, it's a vital key element thing that's necessary for any, any, any relationship. You're gonna get to know, you're gonna get to know God, you gotta, you gotta know that. God talk. You want to know God as a friend? You got to know what a what is it a friend? What is it that a friend is? You know, and and if you and if you don't know what a friend is, do like I do. Find somebody that you know that knows friendship, and mimic mimic them. Follow them. Watch them. Talk to them. Learn what it is to have a friend or to be a friend. I want God to be my friend. I want to be a friend of God, and I find out what it what it what it entails, and then you go deep. Again, God is on the inside of you. That relationship that you seek and that it's uh, it's in there. It's inside. That the kingdom is there. The king is there. The father is there. The friend is it's inside of you. That what you yearn and you ask, you seek for. So figure out those characteristics that you're looking for. And you start seeking God in that perspective. And you will find him because the word assures us of that. God already knows you. 
that's waiting for you to know him or him and her. And I have to, I have to apologize for pronouns because I get lost in pronouns when it comes to God because how do you put, they don't they didn't make one for him. <laughs> they didn't make one for God. So God is all of that and then some again. So excuse me when I say he or she or whatever, however designated, because God is all of that to me. So, but um, just get to know, get to know your friend, if that's what you're looking for. Get to know the brother, if you're looking for a brother. Get to know a, someone to lead you out of the dark places. How do you, what, what do you need to lead out of a dark place? You need some light. So get to know God as the light that, that you need in your, to, to light your way. Whatever it is, God knows you and God will open, op, God is always open to allow you to explore. Ask me anything, he says. Ask of me anything and believe that I will give it to you and it's yours. So surrender yourself to, or give yourself, allow yourself to become even more, not, you know, a stranger of strangers, an easy thing not to be. Once you know somebody's name and you, you know, you know, you cleared them through the FBI and all the other things, you know, they're safe. It's okay, you know, you can, you know, your neighbors, you know, you can, you know, your neighbors are safe because they live in the same neighborhood. Nobody's coming, taking them away. So you know basic things about them. But the more you know about God, the clearer the voice of the, the clearer you hear the voice, the, the more, the, the more, the easier, the, the clearer, it was just to clear the com com communication. That's how you learn. That's why the sheep, the sheep knew the shepherd, because the shepherd fed him. What does sheep need? Sheep don't need much, but just feed me. Feed me and, you know, and always have something for me to, to eat. So once the fed, you know, that shepherd, that shepherd was there, got that, that sheep satisfied, that sheep, that, that shepherd, oh, it just had to hum and the sheep would come running. Oh, got some, got some more food for me. So whatever it is you need, whatever it is you're looking for, you're lacking, you're wanting, want to know more about, well, what, what else is there to know about God? There's an endless, endless, infinity, infinite to know about God. You define it. You define how much you want to know God because God knows you. God knows you intimately. There's not a secret about you that God doesn't know. And you know what? God loves you anyway. All the secrets that you have that you just would not ever tell me or wouldn't even, you know, you, you know, you don't even want to think about them. God knows them and God still loves you. And he and God is always saying, there's more. It's coming out. Come on, it's deeper. You can go deeper. You will never exhaust getting to know the the infinite, the infinite love and the infinite light, the infinite abundance of everything that is that is yours in a relationship and a connection with God. But you gotta be able to identify it. So you got to get in there and you got to cultivate, nurture that relationship. And communication is the key to nurturing it. Teach yourself. You know, they said, blessed is the ear that hear. If you have an ear, let it hear, you know, hear it, hear. He who has an ear, hear it. Nurture that, nurture that's hearing. You know, there's a, like I said, there's a conversation or a, or a, or a God speak, a God language that each one of us have. Each one of us has have it. We're no stranger to God. Don't allow God to be a stranger to you. The more you know, and there's that commercial that says, the more you know, the more better you are, something like that. I promise you, the more you know about this being, God, the better your life is going to be. You won't stray around and, and blank, you know, falter, and 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 if, and if you do fall. All you need to do is just say, God, look up, sit silently and wait for wait for the, the ship to come in. So like Rumi says, and he reminds us every moment in every situation, God uses, God uses absolutely everything and anything to get our, get our attention, communicate with us, talk to us, speak to us. You know, we 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 talk, we we talk to God a lot because we pray and we ask, and we're always asking a question. And then there's another thing that is like for every question, there's an answer. And 
if you start looking for it out here initially and you don't find it, no waste of time. God doesn't waste time. God doesn't waste resources. God doesn't waste events and situations. God uses them all. God uses all of them. There are so many, many, many ways that God speaks to us. We think that we can only speak to God through praying and begging and pleading. Yeah, but God speaks to us. Let me just, just, let me just kind of rattle off a few ways that God speaks to us. You know, I think he speaks to us in all kinds of ways. God speaks to us through our personal circumstances, through just life itself. God speaks to us through nature. You know, we can, you know, through the seasons and things that are happening in the in the, in nature, we can the birds, the bees, and all those things. God speaks to us through them, through animals, through through, and through scripture. Of course, I've I've kind of rattled off some of how it speaks to me. You know, through the scriptures, it speaks to us through other people. I'm thankful that God uses me to share with others. God speaks through me to you. You know, He's passing them to pass this on. James, Lord, tell them this. He speaks to us through events. You heard the word synchronicities, events, numbers, you know, clouds in the sky. When I was a little girl, I would lay on my tummy and look up at the sky and just, just imagine that all the things that God was sharing with me through those clouds moving about. He th speaks to me through visions and dreams. My daughter was sharing dreams. With, we share dreams quite often. And, and, and God speaks to us through our dreams and our visions, through our intuition, that gut feeling that we get. Sometimes that not in the stomach, pit of my stomach, you know, I'm beginning to, I'm beginning to recognize it as something I need to smile at because God is trying to tell me something there. He speaks through me through meditation. He hears me through my prayers and he hears me through the cries of my heart, through the hunger and the yearning. He has, God has a, a connection with my spirit that has that has a spiritual language of its own that talks back and forth. And I'm blessed at times that my spirit man can connect with my physical, my, my physical man can connect with my spirit man and understand and grasp it and hold on to it. There's all kinds of spiritual gifts that God uses to speak through us. Through. Clarence, clear all kind of clarence, clairvoyant, clear audience, you know, all those things. Look them up, look them up. No part of intuition, by the way. And gifts. Those are gifts of the Spirit. He speaks to us through our relationships with each other. Yeah. God is constantly, constantly speaking to us, directing us, leading us, warning us, encouraging us, promising us, comforting us. He always, God always has a message for us. Don't miss any of the messages. Like, like Gurumi says, every, there's a message from God in almost everything that you can lay your eyes on. And ask, go deep. Like Michelle would say, Obama, go deep. And we go, go deep and find out, get the answer. For every question you have, God's got an answer. What well, there's an answer for. You just have to be able to understand the language so that you can receive it. So how do you do that? How do you get yourself tuned in? You know, strengthen that spiritual ear so you, you could have an ear to hear. There's a few things, and they're common things, common practices you can do. Meditation happens to be one. And I appreciate Larry, you know, showing us that we can do so these scans on our own throughout the day. And hopefully Larry's going to come back one day and show us how we can scan nature about us when we're taking that walk in the, in, uh, along the way. How we can even do it on a drive to work if we're working. How we can do it when we're nursing our babies or children. You know, he'll show you. I'm sure he'll get around to showing you. Just ask him. He'll tell you. He'll show you how to do it. But I'm going to give you a few, and then I'm going to be out of here. A few things you can practice to hone in on your ability, your power to hear and receive the message that, that God is speaking to you individually, to you as a as an individual. Quiet your mind. Larry alluded to that this morning. Our mind goes constantly, like a train. Thoughts going all the time, all the time, all constantly. It's possible for you to quiet your mind or slow it down enough that you can count the thoughts. You can't do that. I kind of laugh a little bit because when my last job, I was working for an engineering firm and they got a project where they had to go and count boxcars on cars, on trains. And we had to stay up. Uh, like we volunteered to do this, of course, we get paid real dearly for counting cars, but we, we had to stay up all night. And when we hear that horn, the whistle blowing, we 
get up and stand up and start counting. We had a backup counter in the counter and we would count actually manually counting. So you, just like I was counting those boxcars, you can count the boxcars of those thoughts. Treat them like a train and it, you know, every thought, just count them. Just, just practice that every now and then. To quiet your mind down, to let your mind know that this, oh, okay, you're not me. I'm me, so I'm gonna tell you how I wanna do this. We're gonna count you, okay? We're gonna count those thoughts that go through you. So take control of your mind and quiet it. Quiet down your mind. Another thing is to place, this is a good one. I should probably, probably should have been number one. Uh, let, place God as your number one counsel. The, per, the, the person that you go to first, your go-to person first that you seek advice from. Yeah. Go to God first. Let God be your, your number one counsel. Number the, the next one is pay attention. Be attentive. You're aware. You're conscious. You're awake. Be, a, be attentive. Don't let things pass you by without ah, noticing them. Noticing them. Don't let something happen in your day and you can't sit down and recollect it and, and remember it and, and be attentive to it. And you can see it as it happens to you. Don't be so preoccupied in your mind that you fail to be attentive. Strengthen your relationship with God. God is not a stranger. From this day forward, God is not a stranger. So you tell you tell yourself what you want God to be, and you cultivate and nurture that re that aspect of the relationship. And I promise you, when you get that one satisfied, you're gonna go for another one, and you're gonna go just how deep you can go with God. Whew, that's gonna be heavy. Read your Bible or Scripture or something, something that inspires you. I'm I'm saying something, and I'm not gonna just leave it at the Bible because some people like the Torah, some people read the Quran. Some it's a, a different scriptures that you can read but there's also poetry and 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 shakespeare you know all those all those people that's gone by they had a message god was speaking through them too so you know and sometimes you have to put a put a pen in it to go back and maybe compare it and you know consult your advisor say now what is what are you trying to tell me in this message here with romeo and juliet i don't really and god, and god will show you it will, God will help you understand the relationship that I'm trying to teach you or get you get across to you and whatever it is. So read something inspirational. Worship and celebrate. We, I, you know, I, I like worship. It's good because I've grown up. That's what we do. Went to worship service every Sunday. I love the idea of celebrating because I don't, you know, they worship, you know, you, of course we have an object of worship, but it's so easy to get involved in habits and, and things that we do normally that we forget, well, that's not really, you know, the best for me, but you know, I'm, I'm like doing it, so I'm gonna do it. Celebrate is something that we know that make us feel good. We can understand when they say, let's celebrate, let's have a party. We understand that. So celebrate, have a party. And the last thing that I give you is pause, always pause. Always listen and always pause. And I say, pause, listen, pause, pause, listen, pause again before you respond or re react. All right. So those are just five or six, seven things that I can, I'm sharing with you that if you practice them, they, it will help you focus in on or tune into where God is speaking from. God is speaking from and what he is speaking to you. How he's speaking and what he's saying to you. You'll understand it. Remember that God, just like yourself, is, is a creator. You're creative because God is a creator. God is creative and we are all unique. And God knows that we're unique because he created us. He made us so. So when we speak to, when God speaks to us, he speaks to us in different ways. He gets creative with what he speaks to us too. You know, he wakes me up in the middle of the, at three o'clock in the morning and speak to me. Yeah. And it's, but it's our, it's our responsibility. It's our need. We have to be receptive and we have to learn how to hear God and how, in all the many ways that God speaks to us and what's the best way to get to us and what these messages mean. It's up to us to understand and learn that. Learn God speak. My relationship with God is different in your relationship. Each one of us have a different and a unique relationship. Each one of us have a different and a different and a unique language, God language, spirit language, different way to hear it. One ear is tuned in a different way than another. We all have a different, we all got different beats, different rhythms, different, different 
So I shared, again, I shared some of the ways that God speaks to us. And I also share some of the ways that we can cultivate hearing better and, and, and tuning in. But remember that God, again, God is an intentional God. We do oops and I, don't, I didn't mean to do that, but God doesn't do oops and I didn't mean to do that. God is intentional with absolutely everything. The wind blows in a certain way. That's the, uh, you know, that's God was intending for it to do, happen that way. If it snows in July, God intends for it to do that. What God is in control of and God does is intentional. No mistakes. Sometimes we have to figure out how to read those mistakes that we look at as odd, odd jobs. Like when does it snow in, in Georgia in July? What's God trying to say? <laughs> yeah, God is in, God is intentional, which we try to be. So God does not waste anything. Doesn't waste anything. He makes no mistakes. Doesn't waste any resources, no efforts, no, nah, nothing. So he doesn't waste his voice either. Doesn't waste what he's saying to you. So open your spirit. Learn to learn to do that. Open your spirit by using some of these practices. So, and tune fine-tune that hearing muscle, spiritual hearing muscle, so that you can get it. You can get the messages. Don't be wasteful. Don't be neglectful. Don't be oops. Don't sleep through it. You're awake. You're aware. You're conscious. Allow yourself to receive the hundreds of messages from many different avenues that God is speaking to you, uniquely you. You know, God's got a ton of ways to speak to Gene. He's got a ton of ways to speak to each one of you. But it's up to you. Like I said, it's up to me to, to find out, to have that relationship enough to know. I mean, I if, if God was, if I was French, then God would speak French to me. You know, God's not going to speak in a, a language that I don't understand. It would be wasteful. He's not going to waste his voice in that way. He's going to speak to me in English. He's going to speak to me in Jean. And Gene speak. My spirit man can understand and talk and relate. He loves us. He is no stranger. So we're not going to allow God to be a stranger to us. We are his beloved sons and daughters. Get to know God better. Get to know God better. Better and better and better and better and best and best and best and best. You can't know enough about God. Because God knows everything about you. You can't know enough about God. He's no stranger. You're no stranger. Get to know him better. Any good friend, any good friend want to be, if you, if you, if you are a good friend, you want a good friend, right? Somebody, I, we had a, had a conversation once before with somebody and I said, well, I think I'm your friend, but I'm not sure about whether, whether, you, whether, you know, you're, I don't know. And, you know, we, and he says, well, in the same, if, he, if you're, if I'm your friend, you're my friend. I said, not necessarily. No, no, not necessarily. So if, you know, we want to both be friends to each other. I want to be yours. You want to be mine. Then we have to make that effort and that agreement and come to that knowing. God is no, you are no stranger to God. God knows everything about you. But what you know about God? <laughs> what you know about God? Be, don't be a, don't, you know, just get to know, get to know him. Like B.B. Smith, do you know him? If you don't know him completely all the way in every way, possible way, if you can't know, if you don't know God, like God knows you, you don't know enough about him. Okay. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. That's all I have today. And this is it that I'm kind of went over a little bit more than I wanted to take time for, but I hope that I, I hope that each one of you got something out of this out of this message that um, he wanted me to share. And I know that God wanted me to share because it's been burning. It's been burning in me. And I, 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 I don't even know, I don't know how much of my notes, my own personal notes that I just bypassed. But anyway, I hope you got, got, what, was, got what, what was meant for you to hear today, the message that was in there today. If, if not, listen to it again. I'm going to post it on the YouTube channel. Until I see you next Sunday, I'm going to ask you to say manifest best. To be, to have a friend, don't waste it, be a friend too, all right? To be, you know, to have a father, I want to be the best child, the best daughter that I possibly can. 
to my best dad. All right, until next Sunday. Manifest best. God loves you. He loves you, loves you, loves you. He knows everything about you and he still loves you, loves you, loves you. I don't know whole, I don't know everything about you, but I love you. And even I think even if God peeked and told me a few things, and you know, I still love you. So God bless you. God keep you safe and well until we meet again. Until next week. I'm gonna say goodbye. Take care. <laughs>